Welcome back to Ask the Educator, a podcast for all professionals involved in medical device processing and sponsored by Healthmark Industries. The education team here at Healthmark has 280 years of combined experience in areas ranging from sterile processing, endoscopy, OR, biomed, to hospital and industry leadership. Our goal is to leverage our collective experience to answer one of your questions each episode, giving you the practical tips you need to succeed in the evolving world of device processing. My name is Kevin Anderson, clinical educator here at Healthmark, and I will be your host. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask the Educator. This is Kevin Anderson, your host. And today we have a special guest. Her name is Tracy Raymond. She's SPD supervisor of Vested Medical. Vested Medical was a company formed in 2019. It's a privately funded healthcare logistics company. It's connected to an orthopedic operating room with manufacturers who supply them with implants and instruments. And this company currently has four sites in various stages of operational readiness. It's basically an off-site reprocessing location, which we're starting to see more of, uh, which is great. So, Tracy, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. Excellent. So, Tracy, before we get into the, the questions and all of that, would you please just share a little bit about your background? Sure. I've been in the field for 25 years, started as an SP technician and worked my way up. And while I was working, I did complete my bachelor's of healthcare administration and then completed a master's of management. I then became a manager at a facility in Michigan and then kind of wanted to spread my wings a bit. So I did a little bit of traveling, did the interim management gigs, that type of thing, and then settled here in Chicago. Awesome. So we're really excited to get into this about Vested Medical. It's a, obviously, like I mentioned in the intro, we're seeing a little bit more of this happening and, and some of the ideas behind it just make a lot of sense. So let's get into it. So are you able to share just a little bit about how this company was started and why? Absolutely. So we have four founders. We have Ken Volker, Eric, and Dr. George, who is a neurosurgeon. So the first three, Ken, Volker, and Eric, worked together, and they were with a third-party logistics and distribution place, and they seen this need. So they started to develop kind of the thought processes behind it and plans and such like that, but where they were working, it never fully gained approval from the top dogs. So then... After that, Dr. George came in into the picture and they decided, you know what, let's do it on our own. (laughs) So here we are. (laughs) That's a pretty ambitious undertaking. Uh, So, wow. Congratulations for them for actually getting it done. Right. Uh, But uh, we spoke briefly before this interview and I could tell that at the top of the list of priorities for your company is quality, which is top of mind for me as well as a former SPD manager. So can you share just a little bit about how you are planning and on managing quality for your customers and how it may be maybe different than what we see in a typical hospital operated on-site sterile processing department? Absolutely. So our goal is a zero defect culture. And I think there's a lot of departments around the nation that, I mean, that's all of our goals, right? As we work in this field, but you have a lot of constraints, you know, time, (laughs) staffing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yes. So we are able here in a less chaotic environment to actually follow the IFUs as written. We make sure that, you know, we have enough time, we have all the things we need to do to accomplish that. In addition, because we're partnered with the manufacturer, we are able to test their instruments the way the manufacturer intends them to be tested each and every time, which as we know is not always possible in a real world setting of an SPD department where you get loaner trays kind of late in the day for the next morning type of thing. 
Right. We also have video monitoring in every area. Our wow. customers are able to log in at any time and see real life. They can verify, you know, they're there, they're doing what they say, you know, transparency. That kind of How about that? We, yeah. Transparency. <laughs> it shows our confidence in ourselves and our processes awesome. to allow them to do that. We have also multiple inspection points throughout the entire process. And our technicians are have the autonomy and are empowered to raise the flag at any time they feel something is not being done appropriately. They can stop that line. Perfect. Well, I love that you bring up that inspection and testing and then that culture that you speak of about being able to stop the line and speak up and, and not fear to do so. But going back to that inspection and testing, what specifically have you guys put in place to make sure that that is happening every single time? Yes. So for example, when it gets to the assembly stage, when we scan that tray, it pulls up the IFU for that tray and the instruments in it. So it basically will walk that tech to that technician through the instruments that are in there, how to check for sharpness, how to check for Nick's burrs. Is it calibrated appropriately? If it needs any, you know, um, torque type settings, you know, that it shows how to do all, all of that kind of stuff. So it really ensures that the tech has everything they need to do to test every single instrument in that set, step by step. That's awesome. So one thing that comes to my mind, and this is a little bit off script, but I can't help but think back to my own experience. And, you know, as managers, we always try to give our employees the resources they need and and whatnot. But no matter to what level of success we are at getting them their resources and things like that, sometimes those old habits where they're just, you know, they're sitting down at the prep and pack station and they got this stringer to go through, they just start stringing them and they start clicking away that they, you know, they have what they need or whatever, because they're just in the habit of trying to beat that clock and getting the tray done not fully inspecting, not fully doing all that stuff. So how are you trying to kind of curb that old bad habit? You know what right. I mean? Yeah. So one is one way is an extensive training and onboarding process because we want to ensure that they're trained and they know what is expected of them. We also have, like I said before, there's videos everywhere. There's cameras. So you can easily see so it's, you know, it's much easier to instill that do the right thing, even when no one's looking because someone's always looking. Right, right. <laughs> In addition to that, we, we do quarterly check-ins with the team. So we'll go through a ton of different things. And then if there's any like retraining or stuff like that, that needs to happen, gets done. There is also a working supervisor on the floor with them at all times. So I think just that added level of knowing that someone's always looking. Yeah, it brings the accountability up a notch. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. So we also know, kind of moving on a little bit here, we know that point of use care is very important in maintaining quality and device processing. And, you know, internal culture and leadership often they just miss this opportunity sometimes to promote quality and proper point of use care. And so when it comes to that third party processing of instruments, I often think about how the quality of the inputs affects the quality of your outputs, right? Absolutely. And wonder how would a third party handle this point of use care issue? Will they handle it differently than the typical hospital does with their own SPD and OR, right? So my question is, is this something that you have or are planning on addressing with your customers now? And if so, how? So we have a couple of different things. First thing that I would like to point out is, you know, coming from a normal hospital, we know what's supposed to happen and it doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because the standards do state that they're supposed to be, you know, point of use cleaning. The ORs are being pushed a lot for turnovers and that type of thing, because that's what makes money. Yep. So what we do is an extensive onboarding type process, because we want to partner with the facility, but we don't want to inhibit them from their work. 
So the onboarding, you know, we, we stress that we would like them to be sprayed and, and, you know, um, that type of thing. So that way it's moist and stuff doesn't dry on by the time it comes here. Sure. So we have a process where we actually inspect the trays when we pick them up. We take pictures of them, you know, not not so much for, hey, like a pointing finger thing, but for track and trend, it allows our technicians then if they need to spray them upon pickup, we can do so. Right. But the one thing that I I would want to point out, too, is the fact that we take many times those extensive amount of loaner trays that could have 10 to 12 trays per case, we are able to reduce that by half because we can, we can figure them into our trays and then they're validated at that point by the manufacturer in a third party. So we're able to reduce the amount of trays. So therefore their turnover time is going to be less because they have less amount of trays. So in conjunction with that, you know, it, it kind of allows them, you know, that extra five minutes, let's say to spray them. (laughs) <laughs> you know? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So the because of how you're set up, you're you're setting them up for a better opportunity for proper point of use care and handling and, and giving them a better uh, scenario to complete that task. Correct. Yeah. Gotcha. And, you know, we will then, of course, you know, track and trend if needed. Mm-hmm. We will have quarterly business reviews where we can go over such things, you know, what's going well, what's not going well, what's working for them, what's working for us, you know, that so that we can be a true partner. That's awesome. So I do want to mention one more thing that stood out to me when I was looking at the website. I couldn't help but notice the white glove service that you're promising. And this is something that I have tried to promote in some of my own educational programs and that I think is very undervalued in SPD departments today. So I guess my question is, what does that white glove service look like from your organization? So when you look at our name, Vested Medical, so it it was kind of chosen on purpose, I believe, with with an intent. And that intent is, is we are vested in your success. So we're vested in the surgeon having success and the OR having success because it ultimately leads to quality of care for that patient. So in doing that, we support that surgeon. We support the OR by helping them reduce their turnover times, helping with the setup in the OR room because you're taking 12 trays down to six, you know, so things are set up in a much more lean format to allow for faster setup, faster surgery, you know, that type of thing. We have certified technicians that will actually do the pickup and the drop off so they can communicate with the team at the facility and understand what they're going through because they've lived it in the past, you know, and how then can we improve it for them as well. We want to be those true partners to assist the facilities in reaching their KPIs. What are their key performance indicators and how what we do can ensure that they meet or exceed them? And we have the transparency, right? You can Mm -hmm. log in and see. They actually, um, our clients can log into our own software that we've developed where you can actually click on the trays that are coming to you and you can see every point in the process. You can see the the washer cycle. You can see the assembly site, you know, page. You can log in and look at the sterilizer cycle. You know, all of that stuff is there so that they can see it all. Yeah, that's incredible. So you just touched on a lot of different things. Uh, One that stood out to me is that you're sending sterile processing technicians to do uh, the pickups and the drop-offs. So in a normal circumstance, that would typically be delegated to a courier of some sort, whether it's internal, external, whatever. And, you know, they're very important individuals, but they definitely don't necessarily know sterile processing. So I definitely would draw attention to that because that is something that stands out to me. And could make a very big difference in terms of, you know, being able to double check these things, whether they're coming in or going out, being that next pair of eyes that 
expert eyes that can really identify p- potential issues. So that is really interesting. Very cool idea for you guys. And then obviously that transparency, man, would I love to see what it looks like to be one of your customers and see what they are able to see. Maybe one day we'll be able to to check that out or something, but yeah, uh, really cool idea. I love that extra level of transparency is incredible, but kind of moving on here. So more and more we're seeing these third parties like yourselves or even health systems attempt to centralize their own device processing, right? At offsite locations. So I know when this gets put on the table that those local SPD departments and that staff, they're going to have some anxiety about how this is going to impact their job. And I realize this could be different based on individual situations, but what does that look like for the local SPD that for the hospital that chooses to employ your services? Yes. So I totally understand you know, the, the stress level that a tech could, could feel, right? So basically it's allow us to take those items that are overtaxing, you know, the burden off of these departments so that those technicians can focus on the trays that they know best. Allow us to take those orthopedic loaners, those spine loaners, and let us be the experts in that so it takes that level of burden and stress off of that those departments. These departments are often understaffed. They typically, you know, you all of a sudden get 40 loaners at 6 p.m. for tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Are those trays really going to get the attention that they deserve? And then it impacts their own trays, you know, they're they're sure. so allow us to take that burden. That way they can be successful in their own sets because when you you know have distractions and stress levels like that it could impede the work that they do the quality and so allow us to allow them to be successful yeah i like that tracy i i can't imagine there's an spd out there that can't relate to you know even if they're normally good and their vendors are bringing in their trays 24 to 48 hours uh, ahead of time, there's still those other days where it doesn't work out like that. Or they bring in, instead of your your typical load of loaner trays, they bring in double or triple that because of revision or something like that. And, And revision instruments are hard to come by. So they typically do come you know, not 48 hours in advance, they come right. closer to the day of surgery, unfortunately. And so what a, what a great idea. I think that something like that, uh, what you guys are doing is a great opportunity to obviously partner with facilities, help them grow their quality program, their technicians, their practice without necessarily losing FTEs or anything like that. This is a, this is a very unique partnership idea. And man, what a cool concept. Uh, I really hope that at some point, maybe we can see what some of your customers are saying and doing and, and all of that. So Tracy, any last sort of thoughts or things you want to, that you guys are proud of just anything off the top of your head that you would really like to share before we wrap up this interview? Sure. Um, There's two things. The first one is our transportation. So we just filed our patent for our vehicle. So we did a lot of testing and such. So you can be sure that the the trays are going to be sterile when they reach you. Because, you know, that's a big question from a lot of people because you you always wonder the why, you know, type of thing. The second thing is I just want to say that we here are thoroughly invested in elevating the sterile processing field. You know, I've been in the field for 25 years. So when I first started, you know, uh, we were glorified dishwashers, you know, type of thing, you know, so it's just making everyone aware of how important we are and with what we do and how crucial we are to patient care. So I think by allowing us to be experts in certain areas of the field will then allow us to partner and educate and bring the level of excitement up for the field. That's awesome, Tracy. 
great job. I mean, what a great interview. What a great company. What a great concept. Now you got me thinking about that vehicle patent, and now I want to see that. I mean, what a bunch of great ideas coming to fruition and providing a great service to SPD. And I love the idea of just elevating the profession as a whole. I think that's kind of what a lot of people are about right now. And the voice is growing larger by the day, it feels like, which is an incredible time to be a part of this great industry. So Tracy, thanks so much for being a part of this podcast and being such a great interview and for doing a great job at Vested Medical and for all of your advancement in your career. Congratulations on that as well. Thank you. It was great. Thanks. I appreciate it. That wraps up our interview with Tracy Raymond, SPD Supervisor of Vested Medical. Tracy's team at Vested Medical partners with hospital SPD departments to be their third-party experts in processing and logistics of all those challenging orthopedic and spine vendor trays. They do this while providing a white glove service and with unparalleled transparency. For more information, you can find them on the web at vested-medical.com. I want to thank you all for listening. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast. You can subscribe on any podcast platform, or you can subscribe through our Healthmark Education YouTube page. All opinions expressed on this show are those of the presenters. Before using any medical device, it is important to review the device manufacturer's instructions for use.